like to talk a little bit about how to improve your dreams. What's very important to note is that even though you go into a dream, which is a different state, a lot of the things from your waking life actually carry forward into that dream state. So to be able to work with it, also your brain needs to be prepared to work with it. So if you look at your everyday life, it might be kind of like dull and grey and everything is like both good and bad and confusing, a little bit of a miasma. And if your life is like that, then also your dreams will be like that. They will have this very indistinct, confusing quality where you feel lost, where you feel trapped. Um, the very confusion of life is being reflected back to you in your dream. If, however, you surround yourself with epic tales, which lots of symbolism of fights between light and darkness, um, you read fairy tales about heroes and monsters, or you watch Star Wars with stormtroopers and heroic rebels, um, then also in your dream space you can access these images. So if you want, your energy body wants to show something which is terrible, it has all these images, it has the language, it has the ready memories which can be activated in the brain to create an image of this terrible all-devouring ogre or Darth Vader <laughs> and the other way around also of elves and, and brave dwarves and heroic Jedi. So having a ready library in your head um, for good dream images is very important. So you need to feed your brain with the right images, with the right mindset. Um, reading fairy tales, seeing art, looking at fantasy and science fiction where usually the images are much more clear, much more lifelike, much more pure. It's also the duty of an artist to create shapes which are in a way embodiments of higher energies, of higher principles. So good art translates very easily into dreams. Um, it's very easy to dream about artistic performances also. And artistic objects because they exist already on that higher level so the memory of it on a physical level will lead to the same energy on a dream level it's the same with many of the uh, spiritual stories and fairy tales they originate from a higher level they are about these higher powers which are manifested down in words and from the very words we read we can find back all the forms on the astral plane. So your conscious self needs to be fed with the very material, the food, to make your dream out of. Another part is also really getting ready for the dream. Um, because we are in a certain rhythm during our daily activities. And even when we fall asleep, the body will usually follow that same rhythm. If you are, you've been stressed all week, then even when you're asleep, you will still be stressed and full of stress hormones. Um, so it is important in a way to break your pattern, to say like, okay, this is what I do when I'm awake, when I'm working, and now I cut that off, I stop that, so I can have more freedom in my dream. So you really have to stop yourself from doing what you're always doing before you go to bed. So many people use a certain ritual before they go to sleep. They pray before they sleep, um, they read before they sleep, they watch some TV before they sleep, they do something which is out of the ordinary for them to do uh, before they go to bed. And this is a very good method of, in a way, stopping the ongoing waking pattern to allow a new dream pattern to come forward, to emerge. Not only should we, in a way, stop our daily patterns, but ideally 
we should set up a pattern for our dreams, um, a path to follow, a place to go, and that we can pursue in our dream state. And it's really a matter of um, keeping it up. Because if you do something once, it's incidental, but if you keep on doing something regularly for like three weeks, six weeks, every time before you go to sleep you set up this intention, you start doing it, and while doing it you go to sleep, then these intentions will become a habit. Like every time I go to sleep I will do this. And you can build up a habit in your sleep of going to a certain place, uh, meeting certain people. Why I'm talking about going to a certain place or meeting certain people is because you want to get out of your personal dream space into a collective space, into the collective astral. So in the lower astral you can only see the reflection of, your, of yourself. You cannot really easily learn anything new. You cannot share your experiences with anybody else. You cannot experience anything which is not already contained within you. So really to get new knowledge, new skills, new impulses, you need to get out of your personal dream space into a collective dream space. And often the easiest way to do that is to hook on to something which is not in your personal dream space which can be other people, so friends, family members, other members of the same religious group you are a part of, or spiritual group you are a part of. Um, it can also be places, uh, like you can try to go with your astral body to a certain place you remember. And it's always a little bit tricky to tell whether you are in your personal space or in a collective space, because I can have a memory of a place and then I can think I'm in that place but I'm only in the memory of that place which is reflected back to me. I can think I'm visiting a friend but I'm in a way just projecting a memory of my friend. And it can be very difficult to escape your personal dream space and to get into a collective dream space. Ultimately this also has to do a lot with your feeling of security, of being safe. In your personal dream space nothing can happen to you, because you're in a way playing with yourself, with your own energy. In a collective dream space things can happen to you, both good and bad. You can learn things from your dream, you can also get hurt in your dream. Often the damage is relatively minor, it happens on the astral plane, so it doesn't affect your body that strongly, and you can usually overcome it, whether it's been good or bad, within a few weeks. But there is a danger involved and if people are very afraid or anxious about it then it is very hard to leave that personal comfort zone and to go out in the, into the big wide astral space. So it is often nice if you have something you feel safe about uh, or some person you feel safe with to visit to help you to take that first step into the collective. One of the imaginations I use a lot is building a temple. So you want a place of ultimate harmony and beauty and perfection and this is just an internal place. You want it to be exactly the way you want it to be. What is for you beautiful and harmonious. So you imagine the temple, you place the temple in your fantasies, within your personal dream space. And then, in a way, you start inviting other powers into your temple. This is already the most perfect place possible, so you feel the most comfortable there as possible. And you start inviting your friends, gods, other beautiful things into your temple. And in a way, by in a way, connecting your temple with things outside of the temple, they can come in it, but also your temple itself can go to them. So you don't want to anchor your temple too deeply into your personal space, but allow it also to float upward into the collective space. And also the things which are from the collective dream space to really come into your personal space and to start enliven it, to put things in there 
which are not coming from your fantasy. And ultimately, this lack of control over your dream is what you want. So some people are completely mistaken about this. They feel that conscious dreaming is about controlling your dream, uh, making things appear, making things disappear. And this is all very nice. It's about self-control. It's about controlling your own thoughts, controlling your own emotions, controlling your own desires. And through controlling your own emotions and thoughts and desires, you can ultimately control your dream, because your dream is just a reflection of these things. And it is not a bad thing to have this level of self-control. But you're still in an illusion, you're still trapped within your own space. And this type of power uh, is a very illusionary power. Um, you think you can control the dream, you control the world around you. But no, you're in a way stopping your own emotions, you're stopping your own thoughts. A good skill to have. Definitely a good skill to have, but not the ultimate in dreaming. Because in dreaming, ultimately, you want to go beyond the personal. And it is very good if you learn, before you do that, to indeed control your dream. So that you don't burden other people which you meet into the collective and don't pollute the collective with all your fears and desires and your fantasies and other nonsense which is useful to you but not useful to anybody else. So it's a good preliminary to learn how to control your personal dream space and to have only the things you want there to manifest. It's not a fight. These things which happen in your dreams are all parts of yourself, so you should learn to control them, listen to them, learn from them, but not try to banish them and say like, okay, I don't want any more nightmares. I banish all evil and bad things from my dream space. Uh, because ultimately, this can also turn into an illusion. Uh, the dream is showing you your subconscious, and if you become a very ty powerful tyrant, and even within your dream, your subconsciousness cannot reveal itself, cannot teach you about yourself. So control, yes, but with understanding. It should not be blind control, which is following an idealistic dream image, where you only want to have perfectly happy dreams or some things like that. It's very much the ability to understand your own dream. And which leads you also to control it by accepting the lesson, accepting the energy and transforming yourself so that this very source is transmuted. It is about self-transformation. It is not about controlling the things you see outside of you in your dream. It is about really controlling your own inner self and thereby changing your reflection in the dream mirror. So. If you do manage to purify yourself, and ultimately also through this process of purification, your energy body becomes lighter, so it is also a natural result of spiritual progress that you start moving from individualized dreams in your personal lower astral space into more collective dreams in the higher astral. So simply by the process of living cleanly, not taking on too heavy energies, not having too heavy emotions or thoughts or fears in your daily life, that already you are more and more capable and it also becomes more natural for you to move into collective dream spaces. So in these collective dream spaces you can meet other people, make arrangements with other people, you can meet your own spirit guides, you can meet the spirit guides of other people. So these types of dreams can really enliven your social life, the contacts with people. You will feel that things will start to move more smoothly. People will have a certain sense of purpose when they meet you. Like, okay, I should say this or I should do that because this greater beautiful reality you're shaping in your dream will want to manifest itself also into the physical reality. So you can co-create with other people in this dream to create a better path for the both of you. And ultimately, within your dreams, you should be able to contact higher powers. 
should be able to visit the egregores in the higher dream space, to meet with other people from your spiritual movement, your spiritual group, and also the manifestations of the deities can also be found in the higher astral. Um, it's also possible to build a reputation in your dreams, just like you can have a reputation on earth for the things you do, how you treat people. Also in the dream world you can build up a reputation. Uh, you can get known in certain parts of the dream world within a certain egregore or within the followers of a certain deity, for instance. Uh, so it is very much like having uh, your second life in a virtual world. And yeah, you can have that of course within computer game, but you can also have that within dreams. And I think in a way um, it is because people are unable to dream, unable to fantasize, because in a way their spirits are malnourished, their life force is very depleted in their everyday lives, that we now have to resort to computer games and to all these external fantasies which are created for us because our own capability is so diminished.